participants. He was a senior lecturer on banking, economics, capital markets at the Interdisciplinary Center in Herzliya and the Academic Center in Netanya. He served as the Dean of School of Financial Markets and Banking in the Academic Center of Law and Business. He served on the board of directors of the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange. And if the time uh, was not too short, I could elaborate. Um, very pleased to have you, uh, Ambassador, here. And I'd like you to say a few words. Good afternoon, Anna. Thank you so much. And thank you for your kind words and for inviting me and all the audience. Uh, it gives me a great pleasure uh, to take part in this uh, very important session, uh, part of the Thai Global Summit that promotes innovation in the world, which is uh, something that is so needed now. And uh, of course, uh, to talk about Israel and Israeli innovation uh, again, gives me a lot of pressure. It's a reality now that those uh, countries, economies that uh, focused on innovation and technology are those that perform better. And uh, of course, we understand and the world understands, and that's how I think that uh, Thai uh, became such a big and uh, important uh, organization. We understand uh, the meaning of innovation and the importance of focusing on innovation. Israel is uh, sometimes called as the startup nation and trying to understand what made Israel such a frontier, such a one of the leading countries in the world is innovation. I would say that it's the accumulation of several factors that came together and built this ecosystem that really supported uh, us. Israel is becoming uh, one of the leading countries in the world in innovation. It started with education, free education for all Israel was built on education. Because when Israel started just 72 years ago, Israel is a young country, we started out of pressures. No natural resources, no other resources. So we decided to focus and to invest in education, which later evolved to innovation. The ecosystem, the atmosphere that supported uh, uh, this, uh, I would say, involvement of uh, innovation is the environment that was there, education, after that, the melting pot, which is the military, that is very important and part of our becoming what we became, was the melting pot of the, of the Israeli society, again, a main educator, an innovator, and many, many of our technologies and developments came out of necessity, and many of them in the military. What else that we got from the military is the, the notion of teamwork, the notion of understanding that there is always a solution. This is part of the education, part of our culture, and also the sense of improving. There is something in our culture and our religion that is called tikkun olam, which means always try to improve, to make better, a better world, to contribute to the, to the world, to everyone, to whoever you can contribute to. We say that if one saves one soul, is it if he saved the whole world? So with this notion, and uh, I would say this uh, commitment, teamwork, knowing how to work together, how to support each other, really made this uh, uh, the ecosystem that evolved uh, to innovation, creativity, adding to that uh, the sense of uh, ourself, I would say self-determination, what we call also chutzpah, which enables everyone to question the seniors. It's okay, it's tolerated in Israel. The idea, the notion that failure is not something to be ashamed of, that it's okay. If someone fails out of innocent, innocent intentions, it's okay, let's try again. And if we just look now and see who are those that most, uh, I would say, prominent innovations, although that in, in, in the past failed, again and again, but eventually with the support of the society and making them feel okay with themselves, although they feel brought out with those uh, uh, new uh, 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 path-breaking uh, initiatives. So the accumulation of all this and with optimism and the notion that there's always a solution, never give up. There's always a solution. If you don't find a solution for any problem, 
it's not because there isn't a solution, but maybe you didn't look enough, so try again. And this, this multi-optional thinking and creativity, we became a, 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 what is called now the Startup Nation. I can elaborate about that more because it's not only the ideas uh, and the innovation, but how we cultivate those uh, new ideas and bring them with something that is can be implemented yet, uh, uh, later. Uh, to very, I would say, contributing uh, systems and uh, 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 equipment and, of course, uh, other uh, uses. This is something that we can elaborate more. But if I need to just to, to give the sense of it, so this is about accumulation of these factors that I'll check. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Malka. Um, before we we go to our discussion and since uh, I guess that very few in the audience are Israelis and most are from around the globe. Allow me to share with you some vital statistics because we are talking uh, about the startup nation, but let's look at really basic, uh, basic essentials. Uh, we are only 9 million people in Israel. Um, the GDP reaches the $390 billion. And um, I'm using the GDP growth rate, which is BC. BC is a new term which said before COVID. So before COVID, our growth was uh, over 3%. The inflation rate was touching zero and the unemployment rate was touching the 3%. We don't have the figures for 2020 and I hope that we will be back to the 2019 figures as we come out of this COVID. Another, uh, another thing that I want to show you is how our country looks. It's a tiny country uh, on the Mediterranean, bordered with Egypt, Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon. Um, in, the, in the south part, we are almost touching Saudi Arabia. And this is our neighborhood. It is actually, in a way, an island an island because most of our trade is via air or sea, but not via land. And that's important to uh, note. I'd like to uh, pass the mic to you, Professor Gadi Ariav. Professor Gadi Ariav is a professor of management at the Tel Aviv University he has over 50, nearly, not over, nearly 50 years since the age of five, I guess, of experience in teaching uh, information technologies and systems in organizations. Previously, he headed the Max Perlman Center for Global Business and served as the founding academic director of the business consulting in the MBA program. For the Indians of us, uh, he is a resident scholar in the IIM Bangalore, spending more time in the recent years in Bangalore, rather in Tel Aviv, and also in the Center for Research. And if he is not in India, he spent time in the Center for Research in Technology and Innovation in the Kellogg School of Management. He holds PhD in Decision, decision Sciences from Wharton School, University of Pennsylvania. Thank you, Professor Arya, for joining us today. And uh, I'd like to start the, the, um, the questioning, the panel. Please do. <laughs> what, according to you, are the major drivers that makes us the startup nation? OK. So th thank you, Anat, for the uh, sort of generous introduction. And uh, you know, I, I had a, I, I'm sort of a fond of t-shirts. But I, in the morning, I had a sort of a dilemma whether to wear the I am Bangalore T-shirt, the uh, Israel, uh, I mean, Tel Aviv University T-shirt and so on. I decided to take something neutral. But still, according to the informality of the Israeli uh, culture, I uh, sort of picked up a, a sort of a, a neutral T-shirt. OK. To your question, that's actually building up on what uh, Ambassador Ron Malka has said. And maybe that demonstrates the, uh, you know, the role of academics. I will sort of try to relate analytically and very succinctly to what Ron has said. And said it's actually a historical uh, sort of a development. 
of the uh, consolidation or the crystallization of an attitude, propensity, if you will, maybe cultural DNA, okay? And the, the, the sentence that describes it, uh, and I'll, if you have time, we'll elaborate, otherwise, you know, Thai is an ongoing organization, so people can reach out and further the discussion. As uh, Ambassador Malka has, uh, has indicated, it was driven by necessity, okay? No doubt. It was fed by military experience. So the military experience uh, has in the past, it's interesting to see the dynamics of it, it was building up certain attributes of character which are uh, feeding the, uh, the, the Israel startup nation phenomena. And I'll mention one more word about that. It was marked by attitude of uh, Jewish irreverence, I would say. Nothing is uh, sort of uh, set in, in, in cast in stone. And people don't realize that the name Israel is actually the Hebrew for fought with God and won. So we, we challenge authority. Uh, and that comes up as a, uh, the ambassador mentioned, the, the propensity to innovate. Yes, we don't accept. I mean, we're able to imagine. And if I go back to a conversation with Tom Friedman, uh, he pointed out to me way back that maybe it's not the startup nation, but the Imagi nation uh, in the sense that he has never felt bombarded with so many ideas uh, as he uh, feels in Israel, in the observer of India and, and Israel. Uh, and that's sort of a, a point to, to, um, uh, to pick up. Uh, it is enabled, as was mentioned before, by resilient uh, and sort of a unique acceptance of failure, uh, informality, and uh, sort of relaxed attitude toward her hierarchy. Uh, it is uh, made imaginable by sort of legacy of entrepreneurship. The, the entire country uh, is uh, sort of the entire Israeli project is about 100, uh, you know, 50 years old. Uh, the, the country is 70 years old. So that has sort of empowered it. Um, was supported by the uh, uh, public policy, and we have Hilly Hurt uh, with us, we have the, the ambassador. Uh, there is state funding, which is crucial in certain stages, and academia, which I may relate to that later when we get to, uh, to talk about it. And finally, enhanced by cultural diversity. And that's where I bring up my uh, twin granddaughters who have, you know, you, you name a gene source, and uh, they have it, including India, to the delight of my Indian friends uh, sort of recently. So that is the, the uh, sort of direct answer to your, to your question, Anat, and I will sort of be uh, disciplined uh, if you That's want me to say. Okay, good. What did you say, Gadi? And I, I will later, if I, there's a chance, I'd like to relate to the, uh, to the role of academia uh, in the story. There are many few, I mean, the many people on the panel who can relate to the things that I, that I mentioned. Thank you. Thank you, Gadi, for joining us from north of Israel, where yeah. you are now uh, located. But I'm Thank showing you. the mice, mice or, you know, stitching behind me. Okay. Those in the know recognize. Very precious and very, very much beloved. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd like to pass the mic to you, uh, Mrs. Hilly Hirt. Hilly is the head of the I4F, India-Israel Industrial R&D and Technological Innovation Fund, um, a fund that started by Mr. Modi and Mr. Netanyahu when they met uh, in one of the visits. And since then, I'm sure that Hilly will uh, share with us more about the I4F fund. Uh, pre previous to being with the Innovation Authority, Healy was the Director of Strategic Initiatives with the Pierce Program for Global Innovation, taking Israeli innovations to developing countries. Um, and prior to that, uh, Healy was the Commercial Officer at the Indian Embassy in Tel Aviv. So. Um, she knows India quite well. I think that you're also a graduate of the East Asia Studies in the Tel Aviv University, and you speak some Hindi. So, <laughs> Hilly. <laughs> Sorry, Tora. <laughs> so, Hilly, I'd like to pass the mic to you and ask uh, your uh, uh, opinion about what are the drivers from your perspective, and also please elaborate a bit about the I4F. I'm sure that 
all our audience today will be happy to take part in the I4F program uh, and other programs that the, uh, the Innovation Authority is uh, offering. Great. So firstly, thank you for letting me be part of this fantastic event and panel. Um, just a word for those of you who haven't heard about us, the Israel Innovation Authority. We are the independent, publicly funded entity that's in charge of promoting and providing a variety of practical tools and funding platforms for the promotion and creation of high-risk R&D innovation. It sounds crazy, but we are provides public funding to private sector companies, and this connects to the I4F, to come together and to do disruptive uh, creation and development of technology. Um, we've existed for years, uh, addressing the dynamic changing ecosystem, both in Israel and internationally. And we believe that um, un, you know, technological innovation is one of the most powerful tools to create economic growth, inclusive economy, and overall an improvement of our quality of life. Um, the Innovation Authority works with startups, growth companies, even huge companies conducting R&D, because we believe that R&D uh, conducted by the private sector really needs to be supported by the government. We need to come in and mitigate that risk so that the private sector can really have a leap of faith and invest in things that maybe can show ROI only 10, sometimes 15 years from today. The I4F is a $40 million fund created between the two countries, 20 million on each side, in order to catalyze partnerships, technological partnerships between Israeli and Indian companies. We'd love to see, and there's an open call right now, open until the 20th of December, and open to all sectors, including COVID-19 solutions. And we'd love to see strong partnerships come together to the fund and ask for money for projects of up to two years to conduct R&D and development. Um, so far, uh, we've already approved 12 projects over the last uh, two years. Uh, fantastic partnerships. We're talking about 24 co companies um, with, you know, uh, and so for all of you asking, is the funding really there? Yes, we have already provided, um, you know, $10 million in funding. So um, we, you know, Anab has my email, and if any of you have questions, we're here at your disposal for anything you need. And this is just one example of the role the government can take to really assist companies in coming together, collaborating, and doing high-quality research and development and finding new products. I just want to say one last thing for those of you on the Indian side and globally thinking. These are projects where the government is involved, but we don't take equity and we don't take interest. So this is really quality uh, conditional grant money for you. I, I see Mr. Mishra nodding. So I hope that uh, he will take it into consideration. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna take uh, Mr. Mishra for a conversation after and see how we can collaborate because the Innovation Authority loves collaborating with multinational corporations that have a cutting edge view uh, like Aditya Birla and we'd love to see if we can take the conversation forward. Great, thank you, thank you, Hilly. Uh, we so will much. come back to you, uh, of course, soon. Uh, I'm passing the mic to you, uh, Mr. Grossman. Grossman has a lethal combination of a lawyer and an engineer. When he is making a contract, he understands the, the business, but also the technical uh, aspects. Uh, Mr. Grossman is the partner at LPM Law, one of the leading technology law firms in Israel and is managing the firm's Indian practice. Usually I have two numbers of Mr. Grossman, one is Indian number and one is an Israeli number. And it, uh, I'm happy that the WhatsApp applies for both. Prior to the film, he was in charge of the legal engagements of one of Israel's leading defense companies in India. Mr. Grossman has developed expertise and acquired in-depth knowledge in Indian law and regulations, as well as Indian business culture and practice. So Mr. Grossman, um, from your perspective, is it really easy to make business uh, in Israel? Is it really easy to invest in Israel for international investors? 
Yes, well, um, I don't like the word easy, but I think it's uh, easier than in many other places. Israel in general, I think since the, the, the dissipation of Israel in the 72 years back, is really, really uh, looking for foreign investment in Israel. I think Israel is among the most FDI-friendly countries, uh, and it uh, appears in many regulations. I mean, uh, foreign investors are uh, enjoying zero uh, capital gain taxation. We are very open-minded to that. This is only this is one of the reasons for uh, having been a startup nation because. Uh, there is a huge uh, infusion of uh, investment from all over the world in Israel, through BCs to some other routes. But we are very open-minded for investment in general. By the way, we are even more open-minded for investment from India. Uh, there's almost zero regulation on that, excluding some very uh, strategic investment that in that case we have to go through, through some approvals. But it's very easy to invest in Israel, and uh, Israel has a very strong and transparent and fair legal system. So in that sense, you feel that you are playing in your uh, home uh, home ground. Uh, you will not be uh, discriminated or facing any legal problems. Uh, sure, there are some you know, uh, cultural gaps that has to be uh, bridged, but this is something that is uh, can easily be done. We are open-minded. We are very um, curious to learn the other side. So in that sense, Israel is, is great. And we are very, very um, informal in the sense that we are very open uh, in our communication with foreigners. And see what happened just recently with the UAE. I think that we have signed the Airbnb Accords two weeks back. Now all the flights are from both sides only fully booked. 60 uh, flights a week from Israel to... The Emirates. Yes, and, uh, yes, yes. So it's uh, something, I and mean, this is something that can be learned. And uh, by the way, it's going to be more and more in more countries. So in that sense, yes, Israel is very uh, friendly for investors. Again, you have to follow the rules. Easy doesn't mean that it's a jungle. You have to follow the rules, but the government is very supportive to that. Uh, by the way, I think that the, the relations between the government and the entrepreneurs, like the Relations between me and my kids is we say give us the money and don't interfere beyond that. So if the, the, the government does not interfere, what he says is very true. They don't take equity. They don't take uh, major decisions. If you fail, you don't have you don't you don't have to give any personal uh, guarantees for that. Uh, we are encouraging people to to fail in order to learn for the next uh, round. Um, that's it. So in that sense, somebody tell me that Israel is the Disneyland, the, the, the wonderland for all the investors and innovators, and uh, I totally agree with that. There's some you know, paperwork to do, but that's what our, our goal here. Uh, just uh, yesterday on the, the Marker magazine, uh, I saw news that investments in startup in year 2020, and you know what happened in 2020, still Investment in startups grew by 25%, according to Startup Nation Central, and it will reach 10 billion this year. It's quite interesting to see that even of the lockdowns and the slowing economy, investments are booming. And this is very encouraging. Israel is still maintaining its number one rank in investment in R&D for the years. And I think this is the, the main driver for us uh, as a startup nation. But I think the term startup nation is a little uh, undermining. It's not only startup, it's innovation all over the world. There's in the huge corporates, uh, in-house invest uh, investment in R&D, encouragement always to reinvent yourself. It's not just the startups. The startup is one very you know, uh, um, sexy way to say it, but it's, it's much more beyond that. It's much more beyond that. And only when you come to Israel, you can understand. On the reworks, there are lots of energies. Thank you, Mr. Grossman. <clears throat> I'd like to pass to our representative in uh, Dubai, I guess. Mr. Porat, you can turn on uh, your camera. Uh, I see that you are driving somewhere. Are you going to the airport in uh, Dubai? I was wondering Not if yet, you're but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
not yet, but again, uh, this is part of the thing that I'm part of the Israeli delegation uh, that, uh, that arrived a couple of days ago to, uh, to a huge conference in technology in the UAE with additional 60 countries. Uh, so it's amazing. This is my first time in Dubai. And, uh, and to see uh, the friendship and uh, the transparency to, to meet one another and to, to be uh, joining forces towards innovation so it's amazing. I just uh, didn't present you properly, uh, Mr. Porat. So Mr. Moshe Porat is the CEO of MeshLab. He specializes in establishing innovation centers and centers of excellence and accelerators. <clears throat> Presently is VP of Operations and Head of AI in the Center of Excellence in the Road to Haifa, the Center for Entrepreneurship in North Israel. He lectures a lot about entrepreneurship and employment alternatives, teach teenagers technology and entrepreneurs, and on and on, very known here in the scene of acceleration and incubation. So Moshe, I, I want to, to hear your angle about what makes Israel the startup nation. And I, think, I think at the beginning, uh, we are very stubborn uh, you know, fellows so if we have a mistake or if we have any solution, any problem, we, we need to find the right solution for it. Uh, this is part of our DNA. Uh, in addition to this, we have the Jewish model tradition that you need to be well educated and you need to push hard in order to succeed. Uh, and in addition to the things that Ron has mentioned, um, the military service, the confidence that you are able to do things, the level of the education level that we have in Israel from scientific point of view, and afterwards the government support from GDP percentage of innovation and establishment of government incubation and assisting the overall ecosystem uh, to succeed. I think these are the first three laws to start with from innovation. My grandma wanted me to be a doctor. She settled for me to be a lawyer. And I think that <laughs> all of our grandmothers wanted us to be either engineer, doctor, and uh, the third option was uh, a lawyer. And I'd like to pass the mic to you, uh, Mr. Mishra. We invited you to give uh, the outside perspective on Israel. Uh, Mr. Mishra is the Chief Innovation Officer and Head of Group Services at the Aditya Birla Group. For the Indians, we don't need to present who is the Aditya Birla. For the international audience, I, I guess uh, we can give an introduction that this is uh, a group uh, touching the 50 billion uh, mark. Mr. Mishra joined the group two years back and oversees data analytics, consumer insights, business development, sustainability, group projects, and group IT. Prior, prior to joining the Aditya Birla, he was the chief operating officer and executive director at Bennett Coleman. And prior to that, he spent 24 years in Hindustan Unilever. Uh, he holds MBA for IIM Hamdabad and also a Wharton alumni. So, you have something in common with Professor Ariav. So Mr. Mishra, um, you're looking at innovation all over the world. That's what you do. Israel, we think that we are unique and of course we are, but still, I'm sure that you see innovation elsewhere. Why did you come to Israel? What do you look, what did you find and how different it is? And thanks for joining. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you for the opportunity, uh, uh, that it's a pleasure to be here among friends. Uh, Benjamin, good to see you, although virtually, I remember I've met you before. Haley, look forward to our interaction too. And perhaps you. Uh, Adi, look forward to connecting whenever I'm there in Israel next time. And Ron, I think you started off uh, uh, the entire thing excellently in explaining what to me uh, sounded very familiar as an Indian as to what we should do. I just wanted to share uh, uh, you know, a few slides, and if I'm if I'm allowed to do so, uh, can the host please enable me to share the screen, please? Can I share my screen? 
Do share screen and then uh, they'll see you. Yes. So I think it's been disabled. I would like to share the screen if somebody can allow me how to disable, how to share it. Are you are not, are you not able to do that? No. But that's okay. If you want me to speak through, I'll speak through. That's no issues. I think I just want to give you a sense of um, what we are doing as Atir Birla in, in uh, Israel, in the Israeli ecosystem. I think the most- Even from, now you can try, try okay. to do it now. No, it just says host disable participating screen sharing. Okay. Okay, don't worry about that. That's okay. Uh, so I think the first point is that uh, for us, uh, Anath, having a partner who understands the group well, and for the last 20 odd years, you've been with the group. I think that's a real plus. And I really believe that that makes the first and the most important difference. Uh, somebody who understands Israel, of course, and somebody who understands the group. That's the first one. So we have a great partner in, with ANG. The second one is that we have very clear themes of collaboration of 16 diverse areas. Uh, you know, and, and they, they really um, go from consumer centricity uh, to customer lifetime value, to creating a lean and clean business, to looking at emerging tech and materials across the, across the uh, four areas. Uh, and you know, there are various pieces within them. There are 16 diverse themes that we do collaboration with you as we speak. Our active engagement, uh, our active engagement um, is with 50 plus startups uh, and, and four universities as we speak. Uh, and that's the level, so we have in the last two years, we are in consultation or in talk with about 50 startups from Israel and four universities in which the work uh, is being done. Um, we, we have visited, I've taken four of my businesses to Israel in recent times in the last two years, being physically there and seeing the innovation in the place where it works is very different from bringing it here and seeing it from a distance. And I think our leadership visited Israel uh, in, 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 uh, in the last two years. And as we speak, there are seven engagements which are very much in closure as we speak that is, that is going on uh, into the piece. What has worked for us? That's, this, is our, this is our current interaction. What has worked for us? I think the first is the collaborative approach that the Israeli ecosystem takes. I think whether it's, it, it's with our partner with ANG, the government, the innovation ecosystem, the software of what uh, the way you work, which is something that I think everybody mentioned, started off with Ron himself, that you are solution focused. You don't give up easily, right? Failure is okay, it's okay to fail, it's fine. Nothing is impossible. Uh, open atmosphere, right? Uh, what you see is what you get. It's not that you, you, you think something else and say something else, and that's brilliant. Because for us, it's important that we must have a, have a partner that is speaking exactly how he or she feels. The second piece that works for us, apart from the collaborative approach, is innovative solutions and the areas of relevance. And I talked to you about 16 areas that we are looking at in terms of where the area of relevance is. The third, of course, is a natural synergy between India and Israel, and you know that. Uh, it's, it's, it's just the way our starts with the software. We are made in very similar ways. When you are all talking about um, how you wanted to be an uh, engineer, doctor, or a, or a lawyer, pretty similar. Uh, work hard, do the right things, um, uh, never ever give up, pretty similar. Uh, be welcoming, be solution focused, be entrepreneur in your approach, pretty similar. So I think there's a lot of similarity, there's a natural synergy. And I think you create great innovations given the, given the quality of your mind and research. And of course, we help you get the global market opportunity of taking your uh, startups across, not just to India, but we are a globally relevant company and uh, a multinational and Indian multinational global. And we have close to a half our turnover that comes from uh, outside of India. Uh, the next point I would say is focus search, uh, whether it's the startups, and I think somebody mentioned that, I think uh, uh, Benjamin, you also talked about it, startups, universities, the R&D in the universities, the material library, don't forget, I thought I was pretty amazed when I went to material library first time. And I've seen material libraries across the world, 
this was this was also very 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 different um and the last point i would make is sectoral specialization you don't believe in only specialization of course necessity military is a great start point but you look at specialization plus which is example i'll give you many example but one i would like to take is looking at technology plus sustainability how do you drive sustainable business through technology i think however i believe there are areas that i have learned from across the world which i can suggest to my friends over here what can we do to take this relationship or this innovativeness that israel already has to a new level the first point i would make is to do global benchmarking i think we must do an unbiased benchmarking of which sectors are needed where is money going where is israel good at and what more can be done which are the other possible areas that israel could look at that's the first point second point i would make is rather than only be technology focused let's be excited by consumer and customers more than technology let us try and do what i believe is external innovation ambassadors and you know we i'm i am i am an external innovation ambassador to you if you if you if you take it that way look at external innovation ambassadors who can tell you about where you want to go for your ideas to be consumed look at consumers and customers at the heart of what you do not just technology the third point is uh, look at look at countries and look at corporations i'm i'm hastening to say corporations as key accounts look at them as a key key account concept have simpler collaboration ways simpler terms i mean for example everybody in israel is a, is a, is a is a entrepreneur everybody is a startup person there now how many people do i talk to how do i know who's the best there for the particular need that i have how do i know when i negotiate if i have to negotiate with 50 people it's very tough to negotiate i i think if if we begin to look at both what you offer and how you negotiate through a central uh, 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 you know uh, system uh, with boundaries i think it will be easier and simpler the fourth point i would lay is lay emphasis on is unexplored areas i think there are some very interesting unexplored areas process innovation is one of them and i see a lot more happening across the world than i see in israel i think particularly areas of new materials uh, uh, you know how do you, how do you uh, change a particular raw material or look at new materials that could be as good but have sustainable drivers could be interesting logistics is another area which could be very interesting and i know that there are some interesting areas in logistics from your end but perhaps there is more to go in these three areas application oriented r&d is the fourth one i would say i think you've got how do you get relevant application orientation going you, the way you work with your uh, with your military is there a way you can work with application orientation with corporates uh, which is based on uh, with vcs relevant corporates and universities coming together uh, do look at the european way of working i think there are some very interesting options there how the university the vcs and the government are working together to find better answers i find some interesting areas of learning there last and not the least i think the engagement um uh from a government perspective and from innovation authority is really excellent absolutely brilliant to see that but maybe rather than just do country to country you can step country you can go <laughs> innovation authority to corporates and let's see an investment model that is transparent on both positives and negative and i like the way benjamin said it is not free i mean of course there is no there is no uh, there is no uh, uh there is no interference from the government or the investing authority but there is a way of law we must uh, we must obey that but the transparency in the pluses and minuses uh, there are pluses always mentioned minuses you have to dig deep to figure out where the minuses are and i would prefer that if the transparency is on both pluses and minuses by the way on all these six ideas we are working with six other hubs across the world as we speak israel uh, we will be delighted to take any of these ideas forward with israel and of course um I look forward to our relationship and strengthening it further thank you very much anna thank you thank you mr mishra thanks for this perspective we are sure that we are the best and uh we know it all and uh mr malka mentioned our chutzpah our audacity uh, our directness so it's nice to get some perspective as well 
Uh, and I'll give you now the perspective of Mr. Ilan Ben David. Uh, we try to have in this uh, session today really um, diversity of our ecosystem from government to private sector to academia to incubation and to the entrepreneur. And Mr. Ben David is a serial entrepreneur. He is the co founder and CTO of Chakra Tech. In a minute, he will tell us what is Chakra Tech. It's an Israeli company, not an Indian company, although the Chakra. Um, before Chakra Tech, he founded Genoa Color Technologies, that a display semiconductor company that successfully he led for 12 years. And prior to that, he was in several senior executive positions, including the prestigious 8200 IDF unit in the Israeli uh, military. He is inventor of over 20 patent families and holds electrical engineering from Tel Aviv University masters. So Mr. Ben David, you are here the entrepreneur. Um, can you tell us a bit and few words, what is Chakra Tech? How are you going to change the world? And, um, and then I'll take it from there. Uh, unmute. Okay. So Chakra Tech is, uh, <clears throat> it's an energy storage company with a very specific target to support fast electric vehicle chargers uh, deployment all over the world. Uh, of course, uh, we all use that in a gasoline car, we refuel the car in three minutes and we go for four hours. There's an issue with electric car that charging takes a long time. Uh, so fast charging was developed. Currently fast charging charges your battery in about half an hour. Hopefully it will go to 15 minutes soon and in the end maybe five minutes. However, the power that you need for the charger is very, very high. And there's a problem to install those chargers in area which are far from the high voltage line. So we developed a very unique local storage system that takes slowly energy from the grid, from the weak grid and support those fast chargers. So the driver can come, charge his car, and, and, and drive away. Uh, typically, we use batteries to store energy. The problem in this application is that it has very high power and many cycles per day. Batteries, as we know them, they degrade very, very fast if you cycle them. And uh, we store energy in rotating wheel. It's called flywheels. And that's why the chakra in our name. And uh, the advantage of flywheels is A, they have infinite, I would say unlimited amount of cycles and there's no degradation all over the full lifetime, which is very long. Additionally, it's a really green technology, a very low carbon footprint and very easy to recycle. As you know, with batteries, recycling is a big issue. Uh, so this is, we right now deployed in, in Europe and we are looking into the Indian market. The Indian market is now moving into tenders related to fast charging. And uh, there's a lot of interest in the Indian market in the company. So Ilan, you're a serial entrepreneur as, uh, this is a title. One is an engineer, as we said, one is a doctor. And you are, when your kids uh, say, what is the profession of the, the, their father? They say serial entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So what in our ecosystem made you a serial entrepreneur? What is the driver? First of all, I don't like bosses. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the nice thing about being an, an entrepreneur that you have relatively much less frustration in your work. You have a lot of difficulties and uh, hardship and hard work, but you have no one to complain to except yourself. And uh, I think this is the reason I, I chose to be an entrepreneur. Uh, you know, we all, before uh, going in, <clears throat> into the market, I was in the army. 
in the army, everything that wasn't okay, you, you blame the, the higher management, I would call it. So when you are an entrepreneur, there's no higher management. That's, uh, yeah, and from an ecosystem perspective, I mean, you spoke about your personal drivers from the ecosystem. What do you think gave you the drive to, to be an entrepreneur or, or the other way? Was there any hindrance to become an entrepreneur? Uh, I'm, right now, things are much easier. There's a lot of money in Israel. Uh, Israel has moved. There are a lot of foreign investors. But when I started... The ecosystem was much, I would say, leaner. Uh, it was small. Uh, raising fund was very difficult. There, there weren't a lot of sources to raise fund. And people preferred to work, let's say, in the big corporations. They were afraid of startup. Now the situation is the other way around. Uh, but what I think supports the, the ecosystem, yeah, there was, uh, there was this understanding, as, as said, that you have an idea. Um, usually you would define, if I will put the three sources, uh, so you need the funding, you need the, the culture and ju education, and you need also the know-how. One thing about the Israeli, we are ready to go to areas where we have no know-how. And... Uh, <laughs> I'm in an area which exactly like that, that we are part of the automotive uh, industry in Israel. Uh, I witnessed the growth in the, uh, there is a big association of automotive oriented companies called Ecomotion. I remember the first meeting, uh, first of all, just for you to know, there's no cars manufactured in Israel. Okay. Uh, there's, there's no auto, almost no automotive uh, automotive uh, industry in Israel. I went the first meeting of Ecomotion. I think we were five five guys discussing this. And now you are over one twenty or much more. Oh, um, more than one thousand. It's a huge huge industry. All the major OEMs have or presence or major R and D centers in Israel. So, I think in ten years. An industry we were totally not involving, we became uh, uh, an important part of this industry. I'll so, just share with the audience, and we are running out of time. Uh, that's what happens when you enjoy. I'm just sharing with uh, all of you the list, uh, the map of uh, international companies that opened an R&D and innovation centers in Israel. Uh, from the Indian side, we have the Infosys and Tata and Tech Mahindra, and also Wipro, which is not here, and I hope that Aditya Birla will uh, join soon. So everybody really comes to Israel. We have a uh, last a few minutes, um, and I'd like to do a quick round uh, among all of you, and I'll start with... Uh, you, Mr. Ariav, you wanted to say a word about the academia, really uh, 30 minutes, uh, you can do that. You are on mute. I said, I mean, don't give a professor a mic for 30 minutes where you mean 30 seconds, I will take all of them. I'll, uh, I'll make a few comments that connect to what Ilan has just said, what Mishra has said, and people have mentioned before. And that is the, um, you know, when I listed the, the, uh, the elements that make Israeli startup nation, you know, the, uh, I have to admit that academia is playing a supporting role. Okay. Um, so we're not leading it. We're part of a, sort of a, of a cluster, of, part of, a, of an ecosystem. And uh, probably, and Ilan has just mentioned that the, uh, we provide people who are fairly educated in their professions. And... Uh, and eager to learn new things that they have no idea about. <clears throat> so connecting to what Mishra has said, you know, our role, and in that sense, we've been ranked fairly high, although the Israeli academia is sort of receding in international ranking because of the rise of the Chinese universities. So it's not because we're getting worse, but, you know, other are sort of catching up, is that we provide discipline to the imagination. So that is the, the role that we need to do 
and that and apparently we do that what sorry right that, that's my mark to take the mic from you gadi because we okay. are running out of time uh, okay. i will pass the mic to uh, our ambassador but before that uh, mm -hmm. i'd like to mention uh, to our audience that there is another israel session talking about agri-tech in israel uh, that will start in one hour uh 5 p.m india time 1.30 Israel time. Please join us. We will talk about how Israel is a agri-tech hub. We call it when agriculture met technology. And we will narrow down about innovation in the agri-tech space. I'd like to thank all our panelists today, Mr. Ben David, Mr. Mishra, uh, Mrs. Hirt, Mr. Grossman, and you, Mr. Porat from Dubai. And I'd like to pass the mic uh, to you, uh, Dr. Malka, for concluding remarks. Unmute. Mr. Malka? Ron? I think he is disconnected. No, he's frozen. He's frozen, unfortunately. OK, so I'd like to. Um, that's really a pity that he, he didn't join us. It was a short panel. I mean, how can you talk in one hour about a country that was established 72 years ago with history of thousands of years, which builds into what we are now? Um, I hope that you find it useful. I'm sure that we haven't covered all the building blocks of this startup nation, but still, you got a glimpse into what uh, what is Israel? Here is Mr. Malka joining us. Uh, I hope that he will. Um, once this COVID ends, uh, we welcome all of you to come and see for yourself. Uh, Mr. Malka, uh, we were waiting for you for the closing remarks. Oh, please connect. Thank you so much. So thank you, Anato. I will make it brief. Uh, well, just want to uh, again to thank the audience for uh, joining us and just to let you know that we have the embassy in Israel. We have three uh, economic missions uh, in Delhi, uh, one in Delhi, one in Minyan, one in Delhi, one in Bangalore, and one in Mumbai. Uh, very easily to approach them and uh, engage with Israeli company startup, look for any solution that you joint venture with any Israeli uh, company or startup, please approach us and we'll be willing to do so. This is part of our mission here and just to do as much engagement as we can between those precious friends, Israel and India. So thank you again for inviting me. Thank you all. And uh, look forward to seeing you in one hour in our next session when how to Photoshop a crop. That's the title of this session. Thank you all. Have a good day. Thank you, Anand.